You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're going to hit a good one and most of your playing partners are going to struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are going to share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go and get started. So let me know if you guys have had this happen to you. You're sitting in front of a nice wide open green, pins right in the middle. You got a short to mid iron in. You're thinking, man, I'm really going to hit this solid. And then all of a sudden, chunk behind the ball or maybe you thin the shot you're just really inconsistent through contact but man that is super frustrating that's probably one of the most frustrating things in golf well in this video i'm going to break down a really easy drill that's going to help you to make that clean contact in front of the golf ball every single time let's go ahead and get started all right so i've got an awesome drill for you to help you take the divot in front but first we need a great way to have feedback and i have this dr shoals it's called odor x odor fighting spray powder with sweat max technology this is actually one of the really good ones they make multiple kinds of these this shows up really white on the ground i also use this for my club face you can probably see that on the camera there i use that to show where you're making contact in the club face so it's not only good for drawing lines on the ground it's good for other drills in the in the game too so not going to get into that in this video but we will be using this for drawing a nice straight line on the turf here and once that dries it's going to be really really white it's a great way to see where you're making your divot in relationship to the golf ball. So let's start out by taking some divots in front of this line. That's the number one thing that we're working on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up as though this line is my golf ball, and I'm gonna take my normal stance to get started. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my front foot back until it's almost touching my back foot. And the reason we're doing this is we're actually gonna get that momentum coming through the shot in this swing. So if you want to take that divot in front, in the downswing, we need our, our momentum moving to the left, coming down and through the ball, and that divot is going to happen in front of that line. If we do this incorrectly, we're going to be falling back to the right. Our right shoulder lowers. Everything gets closer to the ground back here, and now you can see I'm going to want to hit behind this line. Or if I miss the line, I may flip to reach the golf ball and actually hit it thin. So anytime I fall back this way, really going to cause problems in the golf swing. So again, let's set up this line, drop the front foot back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step forward. I'm going to swing. I'm going to take a divot in front of this line. And as I follow through, I want your right foot to come all the way on around, just like you're walking down the fairway toward the green. So let's set up, put the feet together. I'm going to make a swing, brush the grass in front. I want to take a little bit more of a divot here so we can really see that. But you can see that started about right there. And then I brush the turf. That's completely fine if you're doing this, but I'm gonna exaggerate it. Maybe even take a little too steep of a divot here so that you can see this really easily. Again, that's way in front. You can see my divot started right there. That's almost eight or 10 inches in front of this line. No way I'm going anywhere near going behind this line. I'm gonna try one more just to give you a feel for what that would be. And again, you're seeing that that is in front. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing with a golf ball. So I'm just gonna put a golf ball right on this line if I make contact on the line or in front, I'm gonna be perfectly fine. This is gonna be a nice solid shot. It's gonna be nice and crisp. If I make it behind that line, now I'm gonna have a tough time. With this step drill, it's gonna be almost impossible to make contact behind that line. So let's go ahead and try one out with a golf ball. When you're doing this, don't worry about if you don't hit one very solid. It's completely fine if you don't make perfectly crisp contact right off the bat. This is just to get that weight going forward. There we go, so now I hit the ball. Did I hit it perfect? No, it wasn't the best shot in the world, but I got so much momentum moving forward, I couldn't hit behind the line if I wanted to. And again, you see my divot started in front of that golf ball and in front of the line. Let's go ahead and go back now. One of the big keys with this is to always start without a ball. So we did, let's say five or 10 practice swings without a ball, then we hit a ball. Let's take the ball away again, get comfortable with this motion, build some muscle memory, and then we're gonna bring another golf ball into play without taking the step. So again, I'm gonna to try to build that same feeling. Feet are close together, take a step. Divot was in front, my divot was way up here. I can even take a bigger divot if you want to, if you really wanna exaggerate. Well, it's having a hard time, my divot's so far in front, it's hard to get deep, but you can see that is a nice clean divot well out in front of that line. So again, that's too far in front. That's a little bit exaggerated, but it's awesome practice for those of you who've been going a little farther behind the line. Now let's make this like a real shot. So here, I'm gonna set up like I would in my normal stance. Now I'm gonna have the same feeling. 
as I come through this shot, I want my right toe to be the only thing touching in the follow through. And I want all my weight on my front foot. If I was to pick up my back foot, I would be able to balance there for a, about a half second before falling back. That's ensuring that I'm getting the same type of forward weight shift that allows that divot to happen in front, just like this drill. So let's go ahead and set up, try a normal shot now and see how that goes. There we go, divot right in front. Again there, that divot started almost two or three inches in front of this ball. That means I was coming in really shallow and getting the ball contact first. Let's go ahead and try this one more time and I'm gonna give you one more key to focus on here that's really gonna help with this. Now we talked about earlier how if you're hitting a divot behind, that right elbow or right shoulder is dropping lower to the ground. You can see this moving down. When that happens, look how much closer my right hand gets to the ground. Look how much closer my club gets to the ground. Now I'm geared up to hit way back here behind this golf ball. Again, if I do that, I'm either gonna chunk the ball like that, my right shoulder goes down, I hit a big divot there, or if I happen to constant to compensate perfectly, that right shoulder drops. Maybe I hit it thin like that. I didn't chunk it, but man, I barely hit the ball, hit way off the bottom of the club. So the focus that I want you to have with this one is, let's go ahead and set up with that golf ball there again. And now I'm gonna work on my right shoulder in the follow through. As I come through the shot, I want my right shoulder to be high and facing down the fairway as much as I can. If you're not as flexible, it may be going to the right rough. That's completely fine. But I want the momentum of this going forward. I don't want the momentum going down and then I won't be able to finish my swing. If I get that momentum forward, I'm really gonna be able to get that divot in front. So good, do a good 10 practice swings again, set up to the line, work on that right shoulder going forward. Now you have that divot in front. Do 10 of those just to get that muscle memory, get that feel of that. Then we're gonna go back to the golf ball again. Put it just on the front side of the line. Now all I'm working on here, I've got a feel for the momentum forward. I've got a feel for my right shoulder going forward. I'm just gonna recreate that same muscle memory. There we go, right down the middle. Best of luck guys, go through those drills. It's gonna make a world of difference. How is it possible that you swing so hard, the ball just floats up in the air, doesn't get very much distance with your irons, and then you see somebody else. It looks like they're not swinging at all. The ball makes this totally different sound when it hits the club face. It explodes off there. It sounds deeper, like almost like a cannon shot went off, and the ball goes 20 or 30 yards farther with the exact same iron. How is that possible? It doesn't seem right. This person isn't any more athletic than you are. They're not more gifted or talented than you are. It really just comes down to the hard science of this. If we can learn the proper way that the pros are compressing their irons, we can do the same thing in our own game. So let me cut to the chase here and talk about the really key points with this. The main thing that the pros are doing when they're hitting this iron shot is instead of adding loft to the club, and what happens when you add loft, so let's imagine this club straight up and down. If I have this club leaning back, I'm adding loft to the face. Now the face is pointing more up in the air. And no matter how hard I swing, when I hit this ball, it's gliding up the face and kind of floating in. What we need to feel like we're doing is taking all the loft off this club face so the, the face is covering over top of the golf ball. Now that's not really happening. That's the feeling that you're gonna wanna have happening though. You're also gonna wanna feel like the toe rolls around the outside of the golf ball. So if this is the club face, it rolls on top of the face, top of the ball, and comes around to the outside to hit this low penetrating draw shot. And that's exactly what I'm gonna walk over in this video. So we really wanna feel like covering the golf ball, people call it that. Some people call it a trap. Some people call it different things, but the result is the same. Really penetrating hard hit golf shots. So let's start out with a great drill to do this. Number one, if we're flipping at the golf ball and adding loft to this, so now my loft is opening up instead of taking that down, one of the most important drills you can do is a little half back swing, full follow through, back, or full follow through shot. So what I'm doing here, I'm making a little half back swing. I'm really feeling like my legs get loaded up into the ground and then I'm gonna accelerate coming all the way on through as hard as I can through that golf ball. Again, what that's gonna do is as I'm accelerating through, it's gonna make it easier for me to get forward shaft lean on this, on this club. So if I do one of these shots here, I'm gonna hit toward that target in the distance. There we go, nice low shot. Again, I really felt like I accelerated through that. Even though it's a little half swing, that's going a long way for a seven iron. Now, the second piece of that, sometimes when players do that shot, what they'll find themselves doing is they'll lean the shaft forward, but the face will be open. 
I want you to feel like you take those hands and arms and close that club face down. Look how my left wrist is bowing. Look how my right hand is coming on top. That's what people call covering the golf ball. And I want you to feel like, again, if you're hitting this golf ball, instead of your face being square, it feels like it wraps around the outside of the golf ball. So I'm coming around, covering over top of the outside. As I swing out to the right when I'm doing that, that's gonna result in that low draw type shot. There we go, you can really hear that one. Just really compress on the club face. So again, I'm making a little half back swing, really accelerating through. And if I do that correctly, then I'm hitting kind of a low draw shot. So really be active with your lower body. Really try to get that ball to super, super draw. There we go, we hear that one. I couldn't hit one much better than that. And again, that's a seven iron with a little half back swing. I'm actually pretty far away. I'm almost 200 yards away but I'm barely short of the green because I'm really accelerating through and compressing this golf shot. Now, one of the other pieces we wanna feel like with this to really compress this golf ball is we wanna make sure that the logo of our left glove kind of stays toward the ground. So if I have my logo of my left glove here pointing forward, if I let my hands flip, now the logo is starting to point up toward the sky. I wanna feel like from here, when I turn the club down, my logo is now facing down a little bit more. I want to roll that hand to feel like that club's coming again to the outside of the golf ball here. So my face is really turning over to the outside. So turn that logo down and when releasing this, let your hand release, but feel like the logo is down toward the ground, right? So I'm really having a lot of forward shaft lean. If I did this in reality, it would be the lowest, hardest hit snap hook you've ever seen. I mean, that ball would really turn over, but I want you to exaggerate that for the short term. Go ahead and overdraw that ball a little bit. We can always tone back from there. There we go, really low shot. Those aren't going more than 20 or 30 feet off the ground with a seven iron. That one actually got to the green. So those are really helping me to get all the energy from the golf ball into the club. Now the final piece with this, we talked about how to deal off the club. We talked about how to roll the face. We talked about how to release with the left hand, how to make a shorter backswing and really accelerate on through that way we're getting the speed at the golf ball. Now let's just take it to a full size swing. Exact same thing's gonna happen. I'm gonna make my full backswing really getting loaded up. And then as I come closer to contact, then I feel like I'm really gonna hammer on with the speed and then a full follow through. So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get one to the green from here, which would be a pretty daggone long seven iron for myself. All right, killed that one. Let's see if it gets all the way there. Yep, that one landed right in the middle of the green. Hit that one great. So put those pieces together, start slow, start with smaller swings, and then build up the speed from there. You're gonna compress the heck out of the golf ball. All right guys, so we've all done it before. It's what I call the scoop and droop. We start to cast from the top, we scoop the club and then your ball just kind of droops out of there. It doesn't really have a lot of power on it. We don't really get a lot of consistency. We feel like we're swinging hard, but we're just not getting anything out of it. Well, in this one, we're gonna talk about how to strike those irons really crisp and really solid. It's what I call the turn and burn. So when we're doing the scoop and then our ball droops out of the air, what's happening there is from the top of the swing, we're not rotating our body open. In order to get that good forward shaft lean and compress the ball, get that nice shaft lean forward, take some loft off that face, we've got to rotate our hips open. As our hips and our shoulders start to open up more, now I can really compress that ball and it feels nice and solid on the face. So the opposite of that again is I'm not rotating from the top. I'm having to do all hands and arms. I'm trying to get some speed because my body's not creating speed. I have to do it with all my hands and then I start to burn speed from the top, scoop at the bottom. That opens up the face, adds loft, and then the ball just kind of floats up in the air. So I got a great little progression for you here. It's gonna help you to hit the ball crisp and clean every time. All right, so enough about the wrong way. Let's talk about the right way now. The first thing I wanna do is make sure that I get a good, good turn going back. I have to load up my body in order to get some power. But from there, the very first thing that I wanna think of as I start my downswing is going ahead and getting my hips to turn forward. So if I feel like I'm gonna kinda of twist, jump and twist at the same time, I'm kind of gonna push into the ground with my feet to get my body to rotate. The same thing's happening in the golf swing. We're not jumping up in the air, but I'm gonna feel like I'm twisting with my body. I may even feel like my knees go ahead and start to face more toward the target. This right knee is gonna come forward and toward the ball a little bit. 
You'll notice in my downswing that that right heel starts to lift up as I'm coming into contact. The reason for that is my hips are opening and the only way to keep those opening is to let that heel lift up. A lot of times I'll see players keep that heel flat on the ground. Now they start their downswing, they can't open the hips very much and now they have to scoop with the arms again. So again, I'm letting my feet twist. I'm letting my right knee come forward. As I come to contact, that right heel is gonna barely start coming off the ground here. My left leg, if I'm focusing on that, I'm pushing out with it. Imagine you're driving a car and you push in a clutch uh, to, to shift gears. I'm pushing that direction. That's gonna turn my left knee out. My left hip is gonna open up and now my hips are coming forward from there. So that's really good. That's allowing me to get in a position to where now from there, as I open up, I can get that forward shaft lean. Let me go ahead and hit one more shot the normal way here, and then I'll talk about what we're gonna do with the hands and arms next. There we go, so we saw that first one, very short. That next shot there compressed a little bit better, got a lot more distance out of it, was able to even swing a bit faster. So now that we've got the body opening up, Here's the problem that I find with that. Players try to get their hips and shoulders, everything opening up more, but then the club ends up kind of coming across the ball. The more I open, the more I get that club kind of swinging to the left. If I do that, that's gonna get kind of a glancing blow and almost a slice type motion like that. So even though I swung aggressively at the ball, it starts to slice or even worse than that, I could do the same thing as my hips and body get more open, that club face is wide open here. Instead of squaring up, it's wide open, and I end up getting that block shot that goes directly to the right. Those really stink. And that's probably what you're finding if you're a player that's not opening very much. As soon as you start to open, here come the slices, here comes the blocks to the right. Well, I got the solution for you. The feeling that you're gonna have in the proper swing is actually that I'm swinging kind of 45 degrees to my right. So I'm kind of swinging this way. That's a sensation that I'm having. So my hips are staying square here when I'm doing this demonstration and my club is swinging this direction. Well, if I bend forward, same thing. Now as my hips open up, that actually is square. So this, without moving the hips, as my hips turn open 45 degrees, that's actually square. That's the first piece. You need that sensation that for a good golf swing, I'm actually swinging this direction. If I think about my hips being forward and I'm swinging this direction, as I open my hips, again, that's that big slice. That's that over the top move. You're gonna really struggle with that. Now the next piece here is gonna be, what do I do with my wrist? Okay, now I'm swinging the right direction, but I'm still blocking it or slicing it out to the right because my club face is just wide open. Well, that's when we're actually gonna turn that wrist down. Take your left hand, and what I want you to do for me is do what's called uh, supination, which would be turning your left hand like you're turning a doorknob to the left getting that palm facing up. And at the same time, I want you to feel like you're getting what's called flexion, which is turning the palm of your hand back towards your body. So if you rotate and get flexion at the same time, the hand looks like this. And that's what's called covering the golf ball. So as I start to come through the golf swing, if I do that, now I have this bowed wrist. If you look at the loft of my club face, now I'm gonna really be de-lofting that club and getting a lot of uh, a compression on the ball because of that. So that's an exaggerated feeling, but that's what's happening. At the same time, you feel like you're kind of throwing or tossing your left hand toward the target or toward the golf ball. That's that covering action as you're coming through there. So the left hand was, was supinating or turning to the left and flexing where I, this wrist is bowed. The right hand is just doing the opposite. As it turns to the left also, that's what's called pronation and then the wrist flex, flexes back, which is called extension. So I'm getting this motion, that's exaggerated. I'm giving you exaggerated feeling here, but that's the feeling that I feel like I'm getting as I'm making the golf swing through contact. And as my, I put my hand on the club, just with the right hand, you'll see as I rotate open, now look at the club face. It's starting to close down as I'm coming through contact. It's squaring up. And now, even though if I get a lot of forward shaft lean, look how the face is dead square. I can really compress that golf ball. If I don't get those actions and I keep my wrist kind of neutral, as I lift, lean the hand forward, now my wrist is dead flat here. As I lean my hand forward, look at the face, it's wide open. I'm gonna hit it into the woods. I'm gonna hit it out of bounds every single time. So the sensation when we tie all this together is, I'm letting my body open up. 
I'm swinging to the right. That's the sensation that I feel like I'm swinging to the right, but at the same time, I'm covering that golf ball. I'm letting those wrists turn down on top of it. So what I want you to do here is let's go ahead and make some little mini swings. I'm gonna start out swinging kind of half speed. We're gonna go ahead and really turn those hands down, and I want you to hit kind of a low draw as you're hitting these shots. So I'm gonna let those hips open up. I'm covering that ball. It's gonna barely get off the ground. It's gonna draw every single time. So let's give that a whirl. There we go, nice low shot. I'm just making a half swing there, but I let my hips open. I got that forward shaft lean, and I hit that nice little draw. Go ahead and do that about five or 10 times to really get that feeling, just like that, nice low draw. And then as you get comfortable with that, start to go a little farther and a little bit farther. Now I got an awesome bonus for you. It doesn't stop there. The next thing we need to work on is getting that club to shallow out in the downswing and really start to cover the club face as we start the downswing. If we wait all the way till the bottom, sometimes it's difficult to get that club face de-lofted enough and to cover the ball. I got a great bonus video called the tennis racket drill. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. Just go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen or down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video plus five bonus videos from our top speed golf system. I can't wait to get started with you in a tennis racket drill. Let's go ahead and do it right now. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball, and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we wanna have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be rotating.